Um, my name is Sengiwe Ngwagandle Lisbongo, um, and I've, I've achieved so much. I'm not going to give you the testimony now. Um, I'll give you my testimony at the end of the presentation. Okay. Okay, what is MMM? Let me ask the guide, what is MMM? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Okay, it's a global community, global. When we say global, it means the globe, the entire world. So it's a global community of the mutual financial aid and donation exchange. So it means the whole world comes together and forms a community um, with an intent to be able to financially donate money amongst each other. Okay, so MMM actually bank, we don't collect no money from anyone, but the money rotates between the members of the community. Uh, it's not an investment company. Um, and MMM, what it does is that it gives the technical system. I get it, we know. In MMM, there is no company, actually, company, it's MMM PTY LTD, or this is MMM LTD, or whatever the case it is. It's a technical app. So what the MMM community does is that it gives us the technical system so that we can be able to be linked with the members globally. Okay, so the, this system, with someone who's in China. It links someone who's in Philippines with someone who's in Johannesburg. So that's what the links is. And that would have been close to impossible to happen if we didn't have something that links us all together. Okay, so that's what MMM does. It gives us that technical link. Okay, it, it, it's purely based on trust, loyalty, and honesty. Because when we say it's based on trust, loyalty, and honesty, you honestly and voluntarily say, I've got a thousand that I want to donate to the community, okay? Um, for a growth of 30% a month, okay? And then when time comes where there's someone who needs that help, it then, it then lies on your honesty to take that money and give it to that person. And there are people who will say, no, I'm interested, I want to join, but when time comes to give the, person to, the, to give the money to the person rather, then they know how to be found, or they're no longer interested, you know. So that is why we say it's purely based on trust, loyalty, and honesty. You have to be honest to honor the pledge that you have made when you said, I want to provide help. Okay. We don't have guarantees. We don't have promises, no licenses. Any, any other person can do participate. My city has no guarantees. There's no contractual obligation. I get it when you join MMM. As a sign is, I figure that long terms and condition form, AT, okay, these are the terms and conditions, these are the fine prints, they are for sign so that you can be um, contractually obliged to do this and MMM to do that. We don't do that, hang it. We just voluntarily say, I want to participate and donate. And you go online, internet based, purely internet based, and you register and then you create your pledge to say, I'm pledging so much to donate into the community. So every person that joins in the program will earn 30% a month. We all know that. Um, so there's the only three things that you need to have for you to be a member of MMM. You need to have a valid working email address. Why valid? It has to work, guys. Because should you forget your password, that's how you will recover it. Okay. So if you decide to create your email address on the air, then time comes when you've forgotten your password, you won't be able to recreate it or to reset it. You, know? you need to have an active banking account. Why active? If your account has been closed, when time comes and you want to get assistance, financial assistance from someone, but by your deposit, your account has been closed. You see? So this is why your account must be active you need to have a cell phone number, and preferably it must work. Why? Should there be an issue with your account, I get that the other participants will then be able to call you and say, hey, Mang Mang, I'm here at Standard Bank, I'm trying to deposit your money. Hey, the account that you wrote is nine numbers instead of 10, what's going on? And you are able to fix that, okay? So once you have those three things, you just, then you can be able to register. So you just go online, it's rsa-mmm.co.co. So after you've logged into that page, after you've gone to that page, you then go to registration. 
you'll then put your details. That will be your name, uh, that will be your email address, that will be your cell phone number. And then that form will then allow you to create your password and confirm it. And then you will specify the person who invited you. In you specifying the person who invited you, um, it's, it's for that person to be able to benefit on the 10% referral bonus. Like if you refer a person, you then get a bonus of 10%. And then after you've done that, you log in and you'll add your banking details. Once you've added the banking details, that's when you can be able now to say, I pledge. You know, because before you add banking details, the system won't allow you. And there's a reason why it won't allow you to go forward. Because you can, you can simply say, I'll add it later. And you can forget. The next minute, you, 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 you are withdrawing and your banking details are not there and it can just be too messy. Okay. So once you add your banking details and you're done, you then now can be able to pledge. Okay. You are providing help. When you are providing help, you pledge what you have. Donate your spare money. So you click on that button, it's a green button, and then you declare that I have got 1,000 spare money that I would like to donate to the, to the community um, at a growth of 30%, okay? And then the system will then match you. Currently, or previously, it used to randomly match you with the person who's next on the queue. But now we try by all means to match you with the person of the same banking details. Why? So that if I'm using FNP, um, and I want to do an EFT and I'm sending and I'm being matched with someone who's using FNP as well. If I do an EFT, it's going to be instant. A person will get the money immediately. Um, it's trying to cut that five days, six days long waiting period, especially when you're doing the electronic payments. So you put your money there. Uh, previously, it used to take long because of the long queue. We used to have a long queue of people who are trying to get into the system and um, people didn't want to take out their money. Okay, so you'll wait long. So the minute you, you pledge that I want to give 1,000 to the community, your money starts growing. Okay, but you'll only see your growth on a Tuesday and on a Thursday because that's when they are accrued. But when they are accrued, already it's, it has been growing for days. Okay, say it's after a month or you've paid and it's after 14 days. 14 days, it's a waiting period before you can make any withdrawal. Okay, so say it's after 14 days and you feel, oh, I don't have petrol, or I don't have bread, or I don't have this and that. You can just simply log in into the system and go and request to get help. So when you go and request to get help, same thing happens. Um, like in the beginning when you were providing help, they will get you a person that will actually provide help to you. Okay, so you will see after you've requested, what if, after you've placed a request to get help, then you'll be allocated a person and that person is given 72 hours to pay you. Okay. Same thing with yourself. When you have pledged, you are given 72 hours. That's three days to make a payment. Should you fail to make a payment, the system automatically blocks you and then allocate another person to a person that was supposed to be paid. Okay. The people who are threatened by MMM, giddy loan sharks, banks, and all these lending institutions. And for obvious reasons, because now, since we are in MMM, we no longer go to FNP and borrow money. If you need money, you log in here and ask for help, okay? Um, people have actually closed down their deb debts. People had credit cards, they had loans with different financial institutions, and MMM has actually assisted them to close down those debts. And the people who are feeling the pinch, the banking and the lending institutions, so that's the reason why we decided to make a comparison between the two, just so you can be able to, 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 to weigh your options if you're not a member currently. Um, I'm at terms as a bank. You know banking, I always say e banking industry is a pyramid scheme. I get it, they are saying MMM is a pyramid scheme. I don't know where they got that from. But the banking industry actually is the pyramid scheme. Okay, we've got IMF there sitting in the state, the USA, okay? So the IMF actually tells us uh, your, 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 your currency values, your interest, your rep, or your prime, okay? So they will tell you, Hori, Iran, in relation to the dollar, is so much, okay? And that tells you who's sitting there, it's the USA. Because if it wasn't for the USA, if it wasn't the USA sitting there, 
were not going to be valued against the dollar. So we've got your IMF there. And after IMF, then you've got your reserves. That will be your South African Reserve Bank, that will be your Zimbabwean Reserve Bank, that will be your Bank of Nigeria and reserves, and so on and so on. Okay. Who takes the rates from the IMF and then come and detect to the central banks? Okay. So your South African Reserve Bank will come down now and say to FNB, AFSA, Standard Bank, NetBank, Capitec, these are the rates. Okay. So down there, so down there, you will find your FNB, Standard Bank, AFSA, Capitec, NetBank, African Bank, and so on and so on, sitting there at the bottom of the hierarchy. Okay. And then from there, you find these little micro lending institutions. Okay. Shengi, where micro lending, TMB loans, Simpiwe loans, you know, falling down there at the bottom of the hierarchy. Okay. Getting all these interest rates from the IMF coming down reserve central banks to them, to us. Okay. And now because they are being controlled by this entire hierarchy, when it ends up to us as the consumers, it rates if you city 40%. I had a loan that I was paying 32%. 32%. Some people might think I'm lying. It's the truth. 32%. Okay. And all those terms are, det are determined by this hierarchy I've just explained to you. Okay. Terms in MMM are determined by us. We determine what needs to happen. Okay. If, if, if we feel we're now, we need to pause and take a break, we determine it. We determine that. Banks keeps your money, we don't. I can have bank account here, MMM. Is there anyone who has given a bank account to go and deposit? But Hambi Ofagala, Yole, account to MMM. We don't have a central bank account. It's not there. We don't keep your money. Bank does. The bank will say, okay, if you want an account, okay, fine, come with us. Uh, we're going to bring your money here. We'll keep it. Okay. And while your money is with them, what do they do with your money? If it was, if it was um, a factory, I was going to say reproduction. So they reinvest so that they can regenerate interest. Okay. So bank charge, they charge us for keeping your money. They still charge you your money. They take your money and they put it on stock market. And they may have tons of money. But they still charge you for taking your money and making profit out of your money. Okay. And we don't, we don't do that. We don't have bank charges. If you invest with the banks, Currently, that is the growth, 0.47 to 4.75. Okay, but let me give you my testimony. I'm an employee of a company, a gigantic media company, big. Okay. Uh, I joined it in 2013, and I was coming from a, an NGO background. Uh, when we were working with Banton and Bantan, my offense and vulnerable children was an international NGO. Okay. So I got to spend my time with a lot of kids. So my charity is most of the time with, the, with kids because that's, that's rather what, I'm, I'm, what is close to my heart, the children. But anyway, I decided to move from that type of life, here, yeah, children and poor people, to corporate. And I'm working for a corporate company um, and I'm working there as a finance officer. We've been paying us enough for us to live, okay? Um, there is no salary that is enough. Even if you can earn 20,000, 30, 40, 50, and your expenses will always go up. It's just the nature of consumer. Because in South Africa, Tina, we are very consumeristic. Okay, We like to consume more than the rest. Okay, So we consumer based. Okay. Anyway, I work for this company. When I joined it, um, 2013, um, the nature of being young, the, the young ladies were here last time, they, they will remember I said this. You know when you're a young person, growing up in this era, the environment detects to you how to live. Okay. They will start by the fact that you must have a credit card. Okay. No, 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 the income that you earn, and you qualify for so much credit card, and then you take it. Okay. Because you are young and your mind is still clouded. And then they will tell you that 
Actually, with the income that you're earning, uh, you should be driving. You qualify to have this car. Okay. Because you are young and, and it's a nice to have, you'll take the car. And then they'll tell you then, no, with this income, uh, you should not be staying in this place. You should be staying there. And you, you'll basically take it. And they'll tell you that you actually qualify for a loan. You can take this loan and go on holiday. Take this loan and do this. By the end of the day, or by the time you realize you, you, you deep into debt. Okay. That's the nature of young people. I just hope young people don't make the mistakes that we did or that I did. So I did that. I did that. For everything that I qualified for, I had to take it. And being black, you have to give back to, the, to home. You have to give back home. So when you graduate and you get a job, it doesn't end there. You have to go back home and say, okay, that window is broken. That door should not be there. The tiles has to be replaced. Plumbing has to be redone. You know? So in the process of doing all those things, now where you have to live your life, and there are all these loan sharks, my bank actually, which you qualify, before you know it, your salary can't afford your life. Okay. So at some stage, I mean, I was living on this thing called temporal loan because I was paying with FNP. Okay. So you know the nature of temporal loan. When you get paid, they take it all. Yes. Then you start again, you take another one. So it means I was indebted to the bank for close to or more than 7,000 a month. Because my salary will come in, they will take their 7,000. For me to cover up, I must take that 7,000 back. Okay, this is the reality. Okay, this is the reality. The money that went into petrol was from the credit card. The credit card with K, that came with, it was 22%, I think, when I took my credit card. 22% interest. But we don't look at those little things, because they're little, and you, you hardly see it. Others don't even look at their bank statement for that matter. So I was there. Life was hard. I will park the car at home and take a taxi to work, because there was no money for petrol. It was bad. It was terrible, you know. I've been networking. I've tried this network. I've tried that. Some they paid out pretty well, you know. But my situation needed a serious remedy. I remember July last year. I saw this. There's a lady that used to be an activist. On with this one, this is an old woman. Hey, there was a presentation in Hillbro. Hey, from MMM. MMM. What is MMM? I don't even know what it stands for, but it's MMM. You're saying there's money there. Okay, did you join? No. Why? No, you must check on your computers. She's an old woman. I said, no, why don't you check on my computer now? Go go see, but it's in your MMM. Okay. In your checker? Man, it's in your checker. Go balong a makama red. Risk. What is this? What is this? Go balong a pagoti 100% risk. Like that's an alarm on its own to say, I will run for your life. I know this thing is a scam. This is a high risk. That's a high risk because we saw testimonies. This is a high risk. It's a July. It's August. At the beginning of August, there was a presentation in Hillbrook. It's a waste of my time. I don't have time for this. Then, I'm being called by this lady. I said, I'm I'm being called by this lady. I said, I'm going to join MMM. He said, they've told me about it, but when I go to the website, it says risk. I forget about risk. Join. Like, I don't have money. There's a guy, he's a friend of mine. Ushalala next to me at work. Nituguye, give me 300 trends. I want to join this MMM and see what happens. And it was Liwena. So I said, I know. I mean, I'm going to recover from Liwena. I join in August. I think I did my deposits first week of September or second week of September of 300 rands. Meaning I can be able to withdraw it. Anyway, I didn't withdraw it. Uprat say pomagabon go to say green mal. That's high. As in, una ma bitcoins la. Our faga ma bitcoins begins at 1.4. Maga wa faga in 20 bonus. I'm like, okay. So this thing works. Let me recruit. I recruited. She's under me. I recruited like nobody's business. I recruited. Then bonus starting, started coming in. I could be able to withdraw. I started your foshini, they fell. Woolworths fell. Loans that I have, all of them off. Credit cards off. The last thing I paid off was my car with MMM money. 
and I have been like I was saying earlier on that I'm soon to be 10k, soon to be 20, 10,000. I'm soon, soon I'm gonna be having more than 10,000 people under my structure because I've been recruiting. I don't sleep before 12 every day. By five, I'm up every day. I don't go to bed before. But what I'm saying is that MMM, for me, I've achieved my financial liberation. For you to be financially free, you don't have to have millions in your bank, but you need to have that liberty to say is when you get paid for the work you've done, you are able to enjoy it. And if you've got debt, you can't. In fact, you don't sleep the previous night. This is what we all received this morning on our POs. I get this morning when we woke up, there were news and people panicked, got on top of tables, oh my word, my money. Okay, this is what they say, and this is coming from the administration, so that it comes from the management. Okay. So from the time the news outbreak, there was a huge panic in South Africa. Okay. And people went in their POs and they did massive GH, massive withdrawals in the system. Okay. And those massive withdrawals that they did in the system caused a little bit of an imbalance. Because during that short space of time, people stopped putting money into the system, but they wanted to suck it out. Okay, because I think in their mind, when the panic button hits, it's like, let me get my money and get out of this place. Okay, so that caused that imbalance. And then eventually they had to freeze the GH and start allocating only the provide help, just to boost the system to come back to balance. Because once the scale goes down on the other side, then the system is bound to crash. Okay, now when people did that, it created a huge void, meaning in movie system year two, the scale fell off on the GH side, meaning the GH became more than the pH. Okay, we needed more pH to balance the system and have a sustainable, healthy, healthy system. Okay, now after they froze, after they, they froze the GH, they started allocating it slowly. Now, looking at the balance that is sitting at the system, which is huge. Like if I can tell you how much I have in the system, you'll think I'm lying to you. If she can tell you her balance, you'll think she's lying to you. you know? There is a huge amount of balances. Now, if they can dispatch those withdrawals, what will happen to the people who are coming in? They won't have people to pay them. Okay, because it means I'll log in there and withdraw five million, meaning the entire South Africa will be paying me then what will happen to the rest of the 99% of the people, okay? So what the system is trying to do is to make sure that nobody loses their money and no one will lose their money, okay? So they are frozen, they're not deleted. Yeah, yeah. Then point number two, they say here, with the development of the system, we will send 10% of the total input to pay back the old Mavros. Okay, what does that mean? It means right now, Ushenyo is on the ground recruiting new people. New people are not affected by this, by the way. It's only us old Magogos in the system who are affected by this. New people, this doesn't touch them in any way. Okay, because they don't have any old Mavros sitting in the system that will be frozen. So, then they are saying on point number two, as the system develops, meaning as the system becomes more balanced, they will start allocating 10% of the new pH from the new people to pay off the old Mavros. Mm -hmm.